in August of 2015, I got my last relaxer, and I I would consider my second transition to start the day that I got my last relaxer because I, I got the relaxer that day. I would consider it to be the next day because, I don't know, it's just... To me, it just makes sense. So when I started my second transition, I obviously knew that I had to somehow make these two hair patterns work. So during this time, probably a few months in where I really started to see new growth with my second transition, me and my mom, we discovered the Shea Moisture Transitioning Hair Kit. This transitioning kit, I believe it came with it. shampoo, conditioner, restorative oil I think that's what it was called and a deep treatment so when we came across this line I honestly thought that this was gonna like solve all of my problems I thought this was just gonna help me manage the two different hair textures I knew that I was gonna have to struggle with I honestly thought it was just gonna help me so much and it didn't it didn't do anything for my hair it really didn't do anything for my hair so when i found out that it didn't work i honestly was disappointed because i felt like there was this hair kit that was supposed to help you with your transition and it didn't help so what was the purpose of the kit so we're now probably about five six seven months into the second transition i've already started to see new growth and none of my protective styles were working. My twist outs, they were no longer a thing because my roots were just so thick, it just wasn't working. My braid outs, again, my roots were just so thick, it just wasn't working. Literally, the only protective style that actually worked was if I had washed and conditioned my hair, detangled, which was a struggle, and I braided my wet hair in two French braids. I let it air dry, once it was air dried, and I let it air dry for a couple of days just to be sure. And then I actually, still in the braids, I flat ironed the French braids so it can create a wave pattern when I took it loose. Took it loose and then took it down and wore it like that. But I always wore a hat when I did this. So pretty much after I discovered that that kit didn't work, I pretty much stuck with my Garnier and my Trust Me shampoos but when i did my french braids i actually started using the as i am double butter cream and for that i've been using that ever since like i still use it but when i was transitioning that really kept my hair moisturized and i felt like that helped to find my relaxed hair when i went to straighten my braids does that make sense so April 2016, I feel like this is my biggest downfall when I was transitioning. So I actually had got Senegalese twists, which if you guys don't know, it's just twists that your hair is actually like raveled into the braiding hair with. Um, so I got Senegalese twists for a trip and I kept those in for two months. And let's just start off. Red flag when I got them done, they were just too tight. Like, literally, the twist that was in the front, you could not see my hair whatsoever. Like, it was just pulled so tight. I was crying when I got these done, and I was crying after. Like, they were just way too tight. I washed them. I've seen videos. People, they wash to clean their hair like that. And I washed with only conditioner and water. And that was, that was, that was mistake number two. Mistake number three was I kept these in for two months. So, when I went to take these loose... Because my hair was raveled and entwined with this braiding hair, it was tangled, it was matted, and it was hard to get them loose. So, when I took them loose, I lost so much hair, and I had no choice but to cut my hair even short. So, that was my biggest downfall when I was doing my second transition, and from there, I just never kept like any type of braided protective style with fake hair in my head that long. Also, another thing that I forgot to mention during this time, it's probably about eight months that I've been transitioning. When I went to blow dry my hair for this protective style, I was losing so much hair because when you blow dry your hair, you normally start from the bottom and then you work your way up and then you get to the top. So when I got to the top, I was able to do it, but when you got that line of demarcation, you can't do like a smooth past so my hair was becoming tangled from that and it was just like coming out and then when I went to get the twist and she went to part it and comb it my hair was still getting tangled after it was already detangled 
the only time I really needed to blow dry my hair, which somehow I don't remember how I managed to do that because I still wore my hair straight. My ends, they were thin, they were getting straggly. And during this particular time, I was wondering why was I even doing this to my hair. I was second guessing this whole transition. I was second guessing going natural because I'm like, dang, like I really damaged my hair. Like everything that I'm doing, my ends, they're non-existent pretty much my ends were non-existent and i'm just like well i my hair was healthy before all of this and then and then i tried to transition to something that was supposed to be healthier but instead it's like i was ending up damaging or making my hair worse than what it even was so i was kind of second guessing myself during this time frame after i took them twist out but then i was also like well i'm already eight months into my transition and i have so much hair growth and in order for me to go back to relax, I gotta cut off my hair to kind of like start over. Um, before I even big chop my hair, I was actually cutting pieces of my hair off in the back. Uh, I was cutting my relaxed hair off like piece by piece like throughout the back to see how my curls would react, to see how they would shrink up because I, I needed to note this before I actually went through with like this big chop so that's what i was doing and i think that was like a month before i decided to big chop and then september of 2016 i think it was like september 4th like a day before literally a day before my third year of college i big chopped my hair when i big chop uh i tried following jayla majette's video when she had the little tiny afro and she was doing that like apply a product like that. I tried following that and it didn't work out for me. I don't know what I did wrong. It, did, it didn't work out. So I had to come up with a plan B because when I big chopped my hair, I pretty much expected my curls to fall into place for them to do what they were supposed to do. And they didn't. They weren't defined. They weren't uniform. They weren't clumped together like I seen other people on YouTube was. That's when I realized I messed up. I was like, why did I do this? But that feeling didn't settle in until a few days after. <laughs> Here's why. The first week that I transitioned, I had a twist out. But literally, my twist did not reach here. I didn't have hair. My dad, he didn't even see my hair. Like, he didn't even know I cut my hair until the next day. And I was like, oh, I cut my hair. He's like, no, you didn't. And I pulled my bonnet off. I didn't have any hair. Like, the only thing that he could do was just, like, look. Like, what? The second week that I was natural, I was pretty much over it. I strained my hair but in the first few months that I big chopped I still continue to use my as I am double butter because I learned that it worked really well with my protective styles so the different protective styles that I did twist outs those were my favorite those literally were pretty much the only protective style that I did almost every week unless I decided to switch it up and that was using my as I am double butter and that was also using the as I am leave-in I would literally take my old twist out after a week and put the top up and kind of like trying to make a bun. My third protective style was the protective style that I pretty much wore all winter was a wig. The first week I would have cornrows underneath my wig and the second week I would take my cornrows down and just wear my hair as a braid out. So it's the result from the cornrows pretty much. So I was pretty much using the exact same products that I was in the beginning, but now I'm just incorporating more protective styles in my regimen, just switching it up a little. But even still, because I was going probably one or two weeks without washing my hair, I wasn't really manipulating my hair as much. And I wasn't doing a lot of tension hairstyles as much or as often. So March 2017, my hair is probably shoulder length. It was probably here. And that is the first curly to straight video I have on my channel. If you guys want to see exactly how short my hair was, go and check it out. I will link it above. But that was where my hair was in 2017. So pretty much as my hair grew... Um, I had to kind of change up my protective style because every time I would do a twist out or every time I would do a braid out, like, it just didn't look the same as to when I did it when my hair was much shorter. I was still using the exact same products, but I'm assuming that because I have multiple hair patterns that came in, and, like, the curls just weren't formulating as they should to the pattern of the protective style. And I actually said that in one of my videos, like, as your hair grows and your hair changes, like, there's just some stuff that you gotta change up as well as far as like your protective style maybe it's a product because i was having so many fails with like these protective styles i actually learned about 
dry wash and goes. When I learned about dry wash and goes, I've never done a successful wash and go on my hair. Like there were times where I would just like play with like the back of my hair to see how some products would work and normally the products that just didn't hold my curls and it just there was no definition. It was always frizz and it just always it looked weird. And from that I pretty much learned like what products would work for my hair. But looking back from like late 2017 up until recently, like I've really been doing a lot of protective styles. So that's when I say like when you do protective styles, you want styles that doesn't require like too much manipulation because literally over the years I've done styles that I really didn't have to do much to my hair like so your hair growth and your hair health definitely does depend on the products that you're putting in your hair but not just the products is also depending on what you're doing to your hair like how are you manipulating your hair if you're over manipulating your hair if you're adding too much tension like all of those things they do play a factor when I sit back and think like there was times where I was just like so discouraged that my hair was short and then for a couple of months I would do these protective styles and I didn't even realize that my hair was growing like I honestly did not realize when my hair covered the top of my ear but I realized that when I was able to put it in a ponytail and then sometime in 2018 I actually started doing wash and goes found a wash and go routine and it worked for me so I stuck with wash and goes for the longest time and I kind of just tried to perfect those over a period of time so in order for me to perfect my wash and gum I would try out different products just to see like which ones work for my hair which ones again didn't work and then the ones that didn't work I kind of just moved on to the next one to see how that will work for me okay, so moving on 2019 is the year that I didn't have any heat to my hair um, what I mean by no heat I mean no flat iron so I didn't straighten my hair at all in 2019 I blow dried it but that was only for protective style that I got multiple weeks wear out of it. So in 2019 I literally did a stretch twist out, buns, ponytails, wash and goes, braid outs, and french braid. So now that we're in 2020 what am I doing to my hair? What am I putting in my hair? I'm pretty much still using the exact same products. Um, the products that I've been using so far that I've recently shown on my channel, those are the products that I've, I'm using. They're working for me. I haven't had to drop them recently, so those are the products that I'm sticking with for now until my hair just pretty much becomes accustomed to it. As of the beginning of April, my hair is officially at hip length. I've literally only straightened my hair twice since I was able to straighten it after 2019. As of now, it's almost the end of April and we're still in quarantine. I've had this style in for three weeks on Tuesday and looking back like I said my hair definitely did grow when I did like less manipulation so meaning I went from one protective style to the next without washing. I'm probably going to take these out and then do another braided hairstyle before I end up washing it because I actually did have to blow dry my hair in order for me to do these. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do but that was my full hair journey. You guys sat through three years. Four years told you the negatives I told you the positives that I went through and I feel like if you're somebody that's transitioning or if you're debating on going natural that's something that you need to know because I really didn't do much research when I went natural so I do hope you guys like the video definitely do give me a thumbs up um, if you found it helpful if you found it informative and definitely do share it to others it could be very helpful to them and don't forget to subscribe we will be doing a 5k giveaway when the time comes so hit the subscribe button i will see you guys in my next video